Welcome to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973, an inspirational podcast about the ups and downs of life and everything in between. Here's your host, Shane Lakita. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, all my friends here on the podcast of Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. You know, all the listeners that have been here for a long period of time, I always try to open up with a little bit of a thanks and gratitude for each and every one of you because you have been here since pretty much the beginning, supporting me, lifting me up, encouraging me and everything. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that are happening lately with the podcast, with my social media feeds and everything else that I just wanted to share with you guys because I think it's pretty amazing. You know, we, we talk about social media in a lot of different aspects. We talk about social media being some of the downturn of society where people are po- posting all kinds of vitriol or, or anger or angst or those kind of things. And all these political posts and all these other avenues that we see people having all left and right. And a lot of us are kind of shy away from that, right? So some of us, some, some folks have deleted things like Facebook or Instagram or different stuff because they weren't necessarily getting out of those social media platforms everything that they expected to or it just upsets them and they move forward and they do all the things they have to do. Well, it's easy to do that, right? It's easy to fall into this rut or this place of social media purgatory where you sit back and you say to yourself, what am I really gaining from this and is it worth it for me to have? And a lot of times I give advice to a lot of folks in social media, a lot of folks that ask me how I'm able to stay positive or keep pushing forward. And a lot of times I'll tell them, I'll say, you know, listen, I purge everything out. I, I literally clean out all of my friends lists or I clean out the things that I've got to do with people that are like minded things like me or the ones that encourage me or lift me up or bring me to a place where I need to be whenever I want to achieve my goals and my aspirations. And I recommend you do the same. You know, social media can be such a positive influence and can be such a powerful tool that people don't necessarily dive into and use the way that they should. I believe in social media. I think social media is, is something that is amazing and can be used in such a positive light in general, including this podcast, where people can log in, listen to whatever they need to. If they're feeling down on a certain day, they can always listen to it. If they're feeling up on a certain day, they can listen to it. If they're working out, if they're, you know, whatever it is, they always have access to an abundance of different resources for them to be able to utilize to change their mindset or move them forward. And I, and I think that that's one of the important aspects and and portions of what social media can really do for somebody if used properly in the right way. Now, I understand you're going to have bleed over with people that are that are just mean, bullies, uh, keyboard warriors, all those different things. And if those are the case, and those are some people in your your framework of where you are, then what you need to do is start to purge yourself out. And think to yourself, okay, you know what? I, I don't need to be around those people or I can mute them or block them or or just get rid of them as, as following on different aspects and different platforms. And the reason I share this is this. Listen, there's always going to be haters out there. There's always going to be people that are that are brave behind those keyboards that will say what they need to say and do the things that they need to do. But at the end of the day, surround yourself with the right people and you can achieve so many things. And... Perfect example is this last week. I received three packages in the mail because I have a P.O. box number that's listed on my Instagram feed, on my TikTok feed, and different things just in case people want to be able to connect with me on a personal level or anything like that. And all three of these packages were sent to this location. One of the packages was sent by this uh, a couple that does uh, arts and crafts work over on TikTok, and they're called The Chalk Pair. And it's at The Chalk Pair, all one word. And they created a sign for me because every morning I wake up on TikTok platform and I lift my coffee mug and I say to all of my people that are following me and anybody else that wants to be able to see it, good morning, everyone, cheers to you. And then I kick off with a word of the day or a phrase of the day or something to be able to kick someone's day off in the right way and we go down that road. And so they were inspired by this and they were like, man, I really love your energy. I love your passion. It rolls up in my feed. I'm really appreciative. So they made this beautiful handcrafted wooden sign that now goes in my office. And on there it says, good morning, everybody. Cheers. And it has a little mug in the top right that says coffee talk and a little mug in the left hand side that says do the work. Now, I inspired this person through social media, through a platform called TikTok and through the podcast. And this person 
created something from their heart to send to me, met through social media, connections that were made with this individual that basically was like, okay, I really like this person's energy, their style, their the, what, what they bring to the table. And so they shared that with me, humbled and amazed, and I'm just floored by the fact that somebody would take the time to put this together, to build it, to build a stencil, paint this on there with by hand, and be able to share this with me. I got packages also from people that sent me goodies up from Canada. My wife is Canadian, as many of you know, and she misses some of those old Canadian candies and those old treats that they get from up there. So these folks from up in Nova Scotia named TG and Lauren, some friends that I also met on TikTok, but we met through an artist community, and I met them there, and we were able to swap treats. And I sent them some Almond Joys, some Paydays. They sent us all kinds of different things like Coffee Crisp and and Aero Bars and all kinds of stuff. And this was all met through a connection of social media. So listen, if if you're thinking about it, you're hearing these stories. These are positive influences that you can have through social media. You can meet and connect with people that are literally in the same boat as you or going through the same things as you or need inspiration from you or can be inspired by you and all those things. Listen, use the resources and do the things that are necessary to do to make these kind of things happen. Use the resources, do the things that are necessary for you to connect with other individuals and make it happen, right? Okay, so with that being said, here's the content of this podcast. Here's the content of what we're going to get into right now in this co- in this podcast. I was thinking the other day about social media, about achieving goals, and how I'm always trying to be able to spread the message of achieving your goals and going for your dreams and continuing to move forward, and you can do this, and positive affirmations and all those things. And one of the things that came up in a question, or actually in a comment, by a a, a social media user that was on my Instagram feed was saying to me, I'm afraid of setting too high of goals because then I set myself up for failure. Now, there's many different podcasts that I've done in the past about this, and there's many current ones that you can find all the way across the board with different opinions. One of them is, yes, it's good not to set your goals too high because you want to be able to achieve those goals and then move on to another goal, et cetera, et cetera. My attitude is this. Why hold yourself back and limit yourself with the short amount of time that we have on this earth that we have to be able to make impacts and make dreams happen and make motivation happen and hit our goals and do all those things? Why set your goals so low just because you're trying to sell yourself short? You're worth the investment to know that your goals should be just as high as what your dreams are. Now, I've talked about before setting realistic goals, and I've talked about setting smart goals, right? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-sensitive goals across the board of what you're trying to be able to get to and push towards, right? I understand all of that, and realistic is important. But dreams and aspirations should not be belittled or limited to the fact that your brain is getting in the way of you accomplishing great things. Because what happens is, is we tend to talk ourselves out of the things that we want to accomplish because we're afraid. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid that it's going to be too hard to accomplish. We're afraid of all of the things that we've been told all our lives of selling ourselves short, even though it might have been coming from a good place. But many people told you, don't shoot too high because that's not achievable. Or if my son says I want to play in the NFL one day, I'll, uh, you know, I try to give the fatherly advice of, yeah, that's a one in a million chance, my, my friend. So let's really focus in on school. Why not shoot for those goals? Why can't he shoot for those aspirations and those goals and those dreams and those kind of things? Who am I to get in his way? I'll outside of just being a dad trying to protect his son. But at the end of the day, who am I to squash his dreams, to squash his aspirations? And not only does that not only go on top of where you're at as a parent or a kid or anything like that, but it also goes into play with yourself. Why limit yourself and your goals and your aspirations just based on the fact that you sell yourself short or you don't feel like you can accomplish things or you're afraid to go for the dreams and the aspirations of what you're trying to shoot for just based on the fact that you might have failed in the past or it doesn't feel great to to fall down, right? I, I Understandably so, although I try to be able to bring in the mindset that failure and 
bumps in the road and things that happen to us help us grow. That's easier said than done though, right? I mean, literally at the end of the day, you want nobody or nothing to happen to yourself on the way to be able to try to achieve your goals and aspirations because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right to be able to sit back and say to yourself, okay, you know what? I'm worthy of trying to be able to fight for the things that I have to fight for, but I'm afraid to because of the way that I felt before when I failed at, I don't know, weight loss, when I failed at, I don't know, professional promotions, when I failed at trying to be able to do a couch to 5K but got halfway through and couldn't finish it, or whatever it is that you're trying to strive for, when we fail and we hit bumps in the road, it doesn't feel good. It skins our knee. We we hurt for a while. We might hurt our ego or we might hurt our mind or our heart or those kind of things, and we literally literally sit back and say to ourselves, you know what, I don't want to do that again. When in all actuality, those types of situations are actually good for you to build character, to build tough skin, and to build experience for you to be able to move forward and be effective at the things you want to be able to accomplish. So at the end of the day, why sell yourself short? Why are you looking at yourself saying, my goals are limited because I have kids, right? I can't achieve the things that I want to because I'm always investing in my kids. No. Why, Why are you in that space? Because you still are an individual, you still are a human being, you still have dreams, you still have goals, you still have aspirations. Yeah, they may be on a little bit of a hold, or maybe they're on a temporary kind of time limit that they might be able to extend it a little bit more for you to be able to do so. But don't lose sight of the things that you want to accomplish in your life. Don't lose sight of the major goals that you're trying to be able to shoot for. Stop selling yourself short. I do it all the time, guys. This is one of the reasons why I'm sharing this. As I was having the conversation, and they were saying to me, I don't want to set my goals too high because I'm afraid of failure, that really stuck in my head. And I really thought about this for a while. You know, what what is failure at the end of the day? Think about it, right? Is failure something that you are done trying to accomplish and that you can walk away and just say, I failed, I'll never be able to accomplish, I'm all set, whatever, right? That could be a sign of failure. That could be something that you can look at. But Why do we consider it failure if we are trying to better ourselves and achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve? Why is that failure? It shouldn't be. What it should be is a stop along the way, a pit stop as you're heading towards the place that you want to go to to be successful. It could also be a a detour sign. Right, So failure doesn't mean that you're stopping trying to be able to better yourself. What a failure could be is, oh, you know what? Maybe that didn't work, so I need to detour to the left or the right to make the right turn to be able to adjust just a little bit and pivot and be able to get myself to a place where I know I need to get to in my life so that way I can be successful. These are important things to take a look at, right? Because I do it all the time. If I'm going down the road of trying to accomplish something and then I don't accomplish that thing, a lot of times I get in this negative mentality and I start to think to myself, you're a failure or you're not as good as your friends or you're not as good as other people in this space of social media or you're not a great podcaster because you've been doing it for three years and you only have 180,000 downloads, which uh, is such a sad comment to make because The way I look at it is I have 180,000 times that people have hit the download button onto their devices to listen to my podcast. So I don't don't actually celebrate and use that as a success. I use it as a driver, which I'm okay with too, because I do feel like a lot of people need to continue to drive and keep on motivating themselves and keep on doing those things. I do. I may not be wired as much that way, but a lot of people are. And I can't belittle that person for feeling that way because they want to be driven. They want to keep on moving forward. But while you're driven and while you're trying to move forward, the one thing that we have in common is is that we're going to hit bumps in the road. We're going to hit moments of failure. We're going to hit moments of emotional distress. And we're going to hit moments of wanting to give up or wanting to throw in the towel. And not wanting to keep moving forward because we're not successful at that moment in time. I had a conversation yesterday. It was interesting. We were talking about how this generation and where we are at. And not I'm not I'm not labeling any age group or whatsoever, because I think it's all of us right now living in this generation right now is instant gratification city. 
We all want the push of a button. We all want to be able to ask Alexa or ask, ask Siri or ask Google any question that we want to, never having to tap into any books, never having to tap into any encyclopedias, know anything across the board. And we want to be able to push the button or ask the question and get everything we want to at our fingertips immediately, quickly, and instantly, right? And th th that comes with everything that we're trying to be able to work for. So, of course, we would love to be able to achieve our goals, our aspirations, and our dreams at the, at the flip of a switch, but we all know that it takes work, time, and energy. All of us know that. I know that, but I don't want to accept it sometimes because I want it now. I want, I want my goals. I want my dreams. I want my, my targets. I want everything I want to right now. Again, to tie back to what I was just saying a little bit ago, because a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are in a place where we only have a short amount of time on earth and we want to be able to maximize our time. So why should I waste it with all this work that I got to put into it, right? If I can, if I can get it some other way, then let's do that. Well, that's not necessarily the right way. And as a matter of fact, we don't learn from that and we don't gain that momentum that we need to, if we, when you put work into something as any, as many of you know, if your workouts or if you do workouts or you run or you do all these different things, exercising wise, and you're digging up and you're working your way up to it and you're building and you're building. And when you get to the apex of the things that you wanted to be able to accomplish by lifting certain weights or running a certain speed of a mile or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, how good does it feel after all the work that you just put into it, even though while you were doing it, you didn't want to do it because it just took too long. But when you get there, how gratifying is it of you to be able to say, oh man, I feel amazing because I put the work in and I dug in and I focused and I, I overcame adversity and I, and I overcame those hurdles that were thrown my way. I mean, it literally is one of the best feelings in the world. But a lot of times we forget that. We forget that feeling at the end because we just want to get there. We just want to push the button, add the magic potion, and poof, there it is. That's what we'd love to be able to do. But it's not possible. It's not something that is uh, achievable. And if it is, as I've talked about in other podcasts that we've done, that instant gratification where you win the lottery or you do different things, a lot of people aren't prepared for that, so they end up failing in the long run because they weren't prepared for it. They haven't put the work in. They haven't d dug through some of the really tough situations that you'll be faced with again to be able to arm you with, with resources and skill sets and all those things for you when you are successful to be able to continue to be successful. Guys, don't lose sight of your goals and your aspirations and your dreams. I do it all the time. I always focus in on the fact that, you know, I got to be a good dad and I got to make sure I'm there for my kid and I got to make sure I'm good to go. I got to be a great husband. I got to be supportive of my wife. I got to be able to continue to uplift her and keep moving forward and keep on doing the things that we have to do. I got to make sure that I'm a provider for the family. I got to make sure that I can definitely pay the bills and do all the things we have to do to live in the house that we live in, to pay for the hot tub, to do all the different stuff that I'm trying to be able to just get paycheck to paycheck, pay my student loans, everything else. So all this noise that I'm listening for you right now will get in the way of all those things I eventually want to accomplish in life. You know exactly what I'm saying. Everybody that's on this podcast right now that's listening to me knows the noise gets in the way and it stops you from obtaining or going for those goals, whether you're putting it on hold or you're not focusing on you, whatever happens, we lose sight of it. And that is so not good. Like we literally should be digging in and listing out the goals and aspirations that we're trying to fight for, even if they are adjusted. So maybe you are in the mode of parenting five kids and you're in the mode of paying bills and you're in the mode of working and all that good stuff. But maybe they are taking a little bit of a back burner. Maybe your goals and your aspirations are taking a slight amount of a back burner. Or maybe you take a look at what those goals and aspirations were and you make an adjustment. And you take a look at, okay, you know what? My goals and aspirations have always been to, I'm, 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 I'm just kind of throwing it out there, right? But my goals and aspirations were always to be able to f jump out of a plane. Okay, great. So you want to be able to jump out of a plane. This is what your goals and aspirations were. But okay, now you got four kids and the kids aren't necessarily helping towards that because, you know, your wife's uh, 
a worry wart. She doesn't want anything to happen to you. You want to be able to jump out of a plane, but you know you you can't do so now. You got to work. You know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. You don't have time to go jumping out of a plane. You don't have, you have time to be able to achieve that goal that you wanted to be able to achieve. So now maybe you adjust and you pivot and you take a look at what that goal is to say. Okay, maybe it isn't jumping out of a plane. Maybe it's doing something else that's thrilling like that. But maybe I can do it as a family event or a family affair, and I can take my kids with me, and we can go accomplish something together and achieve something fun and whatever it is. And those goals might change. Maybe the end goal might be a little different than what it was when you were young and single or newly married or whatever it is. Here's my point. My point is you should always be addressing what your goals and your dreams and your aspirations are. Don't lose sight of them. Even if you have to adjust them, even if you have to change them, even if you have to move them around, Whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, you're worth that amount of time that's spent in parking in the space of investing in yourself for you to feel accomplished, for you to feel amazing, for you to feel like you're worthy, for you to feel like you've done something and achieved something and accomplished something instead of skipping over all of that all the time. Like I talked about earlier, you know, I, I put it on my agenda to be a good dad, a good husband, a good worker, uh, an employee that's dependable and trustworthy, a podcaster, and all those things. But I don't ever really take a look at it and say, hey, you know what? These are things that are on my dream board of being successful in life, successful at a job, successful as a parent and a husband. I always take a look at whatever that big picture is, and I'm always looking at it. But, you know, I've done a lot of things that I can be super proud of, and I bet you have too. And I bet you've looked at the dynamic of what you're trying to accomplish and you've sold yourself short in the past because you're not good enough or life gets in the way or it's too hectic or your body hurts or whatever it is that you can't accomplish the things that you want to accomplish just based on the fact that your mental capacity is starting to beat you down and you start thinking to yourself, I'm not good enough and I'm not smart enough. Goals and dreams, you got to keep them on the forefront. Just like I always talk about making sure that you have your whys in your pocket to make sure that you know exactly what the reason is that you're trying to drive towards a successful place that you want to live in or be, all those things that you're trying to be able to do, all those you know, check, bo- check boxes that you want to be able to put in place or the things that you want to be able to go do or the impact that you want to have or the influence that you want to have on other people or whatever it is, volunteerism, whatever, wh- across the board, it's important to continue to move forward and work on those things, right? It really is. But don't lose sight of your goals and your aspirations. Don't lose sight of them. Now, here's the other thing. The other mentality, the other feedback that I was given by another person as I made a post about this the other day. Goals that are lofty, the big ones, the big goals and the big aspirations, the ones that you know that it's going to take some time, that it's going to take work, it's going to take energy, it's going to take all the things for you to be able to get there. Do not forget to make smaller goals within those big goals. If you want to be to climb the top of Mount Everest, and that's a goal of yours and a dream and an aspiration and something you want to put on your bucket list to achieve and accomplish and go for in your life, you can't get there just with one hike. You can't get there with just one jaunt up the hill and say, oh, yeah, I'm good to go. You got to work. You got to train. You have to give yourself guide points and checkpoints to be able to say, I'm going to accomplish smaller incremental goals to get to the big goal that I want to get to. Now, this is where the noise happens, and this is where the noise affects us. Because when we do break it down into smaller goals, and we want to be able to do smaller things to be able to feel accomplished, to feel like we're worthy, all those things like I always talk about, the problem is, is that the noise gets in the way and life gets in the way. So those smaller goals don't seem as like they're monumental, but we, 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 we push them off to the side, and we don't think about those. Because we've got other responsibilities, because we've got other things to take care of, because drama is happening in our lives, because we're having to overcome hurdles and jump through hoops to be able to get to where we've got to get to. When at the end of the day, if you're setting those smaller goals and you stay the course on those goals outside of all the other stuff coming your way, outside of all the other noise and the drama and all the other situations, you're still not losing sight of those goals. Just like you wrote down your whys, you need to write down what your goals are as well. 
because we lose sight of them so fast. I know I do. And maybe I'm in a minority. Maybe I'm not in the majority of all the folks that are listening to this podcast right now to think to themselves, I lose sight of my goals all the time because I let other stuff get in the way of me being great and me achieving greatness and the goals that I'm really trying to accomplish in my life because I'm so focused on others or I'm so focused on the situations or I'm so focused on the drama or the noise and all those things. Guys, at the end of the day, we're here for a short amount of time. You got to focus on you. You can't forget that. We do it so often when we have others that we caretake for or we're, or we're you know, diving into the family environment or the dynamic of those kind of things. And we always are focused on other individuals rather than ourselves when it's about time that you invest in yourself. Invest in your goals. Take a look at what your dreams really are. Have you accomplished some of the dreams that you already have? And if you have, congratulations and celebrate in that and don't always sell that short. If you've achieved some of the dreams and goals that you put in place when you were younger, financially, physically, professionally, or whatever, then kudos to you for working so hard to get to where you've got to get to so far. And now it's time to set new goals for yourself. You know, don't don't always, there's no finish line. We always talk about that. I have a Facebook page that we put together called No Finish Line Nation. And the purpose of it was, is that even if you hit your weight goals or you hit your physical goals or your, or your exercise goals, there's no finish line. It's going to start anew. Whatever the new goal might be, you're going to keep on fighting for it and keep on striving for it. And we got to be there to encourage each other over and over again. It's your responsibility to yourself, guys. It's on you. Don't lose sight of who you are. Don't lose sight of your dreams and your goals, your aspirations. Don't lose sight of the whys of why you're trying to dig and keep on going forward. Because even if you are investing in yourself, I know that sounds selfish when I say focus on you rather than others, but it's not selfish because we always talk about the mentality of put on your oxygen mask first before you help others because you need to invest in you to make sure you are at a place where you feel good and you're achieving goals and you're going for your dreams and your aspirations and you can start to take people along with you if you want to. And then it could be just one positive train moving forward. And then if somebody falls down, you're stronger and you're more grounded enough to be able to pick them up and help them. Does that make sense? It really got me thinking. Don't sell yourself short. Set your goals as high as you want to. Don't let any punk tell you that you can't set your goals high. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Because you can do whatever you set your mind to and whatever you set your heart to. I know I can, but I need to tell myself that often. And so do you. And I'm hoping that you listen to this podcast and you can just take that one little clip right there and say, don't sell yourself short. Set your goals as high as you want to. And let's go kick some ass today. At the end of the day, that's really all that matters. It's about you. How are you handling yourself and how are you helping yourself and how are you encouraging yourself? Don't belittle yourself and don't shoot yourself down, okay? So here we go, guys. Summarization. Set your goals and your dreams to wherever you want to go. Write them down. Write down the smaller goals that can build up for the bigger goals. So small incremental doses of getting to where you want to get to. Remember your whys. Write them down. And stop telling yourself that I'm afraid of failure or It's too hard to accomplish. It's not easy, guys. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it and everybody would be accomplishing all their dreams and aspirations. But you can do it. It just takes work and dedication and time, okay? Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk soon. Until the next podcast, thank you so much for listening to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. If you do want to become a patron of the show, I'm going to layer it right in here. You can go to www.patreon.com slash liquid coffee talk. You can become a patron. You could sign up for tchotchkes. You can sign up for special episodes. You can sign up for a special podcast just for you. Stickers, mugs, shirts, all kinds of different stuff. 
that I want to connect with you guys on a personal level. And of course, it will help me financially in a lot of different ways to be able to continue to upgrade, continue to elevate my performance in this podcast, to be able to make sure I'm putting out great content for you, to make sure that we're in it together and we keep on fighting, okay? So again, if you want to, www.patreon.com slash liquid coffee talk, okay? All right, guys, have a great day and we'll talk soon. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please do us a favor and leave feedback and a five-star rating on whatever platform that you use.